One might say that we are the rising light in this conscious dawn. This is Skull Babylon, and on this episode of Paradigm Shift Radio, we began by discussing a bit about animal rights and not eating meat in relation to the most recent journalism video I posted, Voice for the Voiceless. From there, we had Scott Love, the coordinator for the upcoming Three Days of Light event that's happening to talk about this consciousness-raising festival and retreat that you too still have a chance to win all access passes to simply by listening to the show. From there, Von Halford was on the air with us to talk a bit about the Illuminati and sharing spirit science videos with our grandparents parents. With a few other guests joining us on air, we kept the conversation pretty casual as we let things go where they need to. Show your support for PSR by joining us on Facebook, tell a couple friends about it, and be sure to get involved with future episodes as well as your own communities. Keep holding the light and enjoy the show. Alright, there we go. Hello, 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 all of you out there in internet land, uh, which is now the uh, radio of today. And for all of you listening to this in the present as well as in the future, uh, feel free to enjoy this, the show. This is Skull Babylon, and you're listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. So, guys, tonight, uh, just to give you a little bit of an agenda of what's on board, we will be doing another draw for the chance to win tickets to, or all access passes, rather, to Three Days of Light, which is happening November 2nd and 4th in Asheville, North Carolina. Go to 3dlgathering.com to check out more about that. And so if that's something that you're interested in, again, we'll be doing a draw for that later in the show. And the simple way to get your name in the draw for that is to message the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. And uh, just, if you don't mind, share Paradigm Shift Radio with your friends and uh, just sort of uh, tell us what you liked about the show, why you've been listening, and maybe just some other story that you might have. And tell us that you'd like to be entered into the draw. And we will do that. We'll put your name in a hat, basically. And then we'll be drawing one name. Or actually, you know, this is something I was thinking about. We may be drawing two names today. So that, that's actually a little bit of a big deal. We may be drawing two names. And we'll do that later in the show. So that's your chance to synchronistically sort of make your way towards uh, Asheville, North Carolina as part of that amazing gathering that is coming up. And what we will be doing on the show tonight, we'll be having Scott Love on as uh, one of our guests. And he is one of the coordinators for Three Days of Light. So he's going to give us a little bit more information on what Three Days of Light is all about. But it is a consciousness festival retreat. So there's going to be music, there's going to be workshops, there's going to be myself uh, reporting on it live on the scene, and we'll be doing a Paradigm Shift Radio episode from the uh, Three Days of Light event, and that'll be pretty cool because I believe Jen will be there as well, who is currently not here. Uh, I would have brought her on now if she had been here. She's uh, just doing a little errand right now, but we'll be having her on later. But we'll also be having on Vaughn Halford to sort of fill in a little bit of time. Uh, he's been on in the past, and just a just an interesting guy to sort of get some uh, feedback from. I, I know he's always got some interesting thoughts and ideas going around his head. So we'll have Vaughn on shortly. And other than that, what's new in terms of paradigm shift stuff? Well, for those of you who saw, for those of you who are on the uh, Facebook.com/slash Paradigm Shift Central, you would have seen that I put up a new video, and that video was uh, myself taking part in an animal rights uh, demonstration that happened at Marineland. That was on October 7th, and that was a really... That was a really interesting day, and, and, and if you haven't seen that yet, feel free to check out the link, which you can find right now uh, through ParadigmShiftCentral.com. It is posted up as the top, at the top of the website there, but other than that, I'll just be posting it in the live chat for those of you to check out and uh, bookmark it and check it later. But feel free to share that around, because the main message that I was trying to get across, I mean, Marineland obviously is a place for marine animals, so there's dolphins and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, like, but uh, there's dolphins, so a lot of it has to do with the idea of uh, the dolphins being in demand and how that relates to like the dolphin slaughter going on in Japan, which is a horribly tragic thing in itself. So uh, that's um, you know the the big issue there that I the perspective that I sort of see it from is this whole idea of like oneness and you know the animals are equally a part of consciousness experiencing itself and more. So so in the case uh, with dolphins, I mean, dolphins, you know, we recognize that. They're, they're quite intelligent, and, and I think they experience things 
on uh, sort of different levels than us. I mean, we as humans, we're so used to the perception that we have as humans. But, I mean, think about it. How do other animals perceive the world? I mean, obviously, if you're like an insect, or you're going to perceive it in some like crazy way where you have like totally different senses in the same way that you were for a dolphin. Like, I would imagine that they're very much they're very more sensitive to like the subtle energies uh, often that we associate with being like emotions and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me again, just uh, clearing my throat there. But, uh, you know, that's one thing that I thought about, this idea that maybe emotions and stuff actually travel differently through water. Like, we, we, you know, we, we sort of figured this out, that, that emotions, like the heart even, gives off a vibration. And, you know, Greg Braden sort of talks about this, this whole idea of morphogenetic fields and stuff. So if these vibrations are constantly being sent out, you know, that's what happens when we're above water. How do those function differently underwater? You know, it's just sort of something to think about. And then the idea that dolphins are very sensitive to that. So, again, if you haven't checked out that video, it's called Voice for the Voiceless. And the websites that you can also check out that are linked in that video are Facebook Talks, Facebook.com slash Marine Land Animal Defense, as well as SaveJapanDolphins.org. And there's also a link within the video to check out the documentary The Cove, which is about um, Rick O'Berry and the dolphin stuff that's going on there. So, you know, th this whole animal rights thing, I think that's a big topic in, its, in itself. And uh, it's just something to be more mindful of. You know, a lot of us with the food that we eat and everything, we try to not even think about, like, the... Um, you know, the harm that's being caused to animals in order for us to get food. Uh, and that's just sort of like the reality of the nature. And, and uh, it's up to us whether or not we want to support that. And one of the ways to not support that is to like not eat meat. And, and it's not th when you sort of tie it in with this idea that I've sort of been looking into re recently, like eating meat is sort of a habit that we as, we as humans picked up. And I'm not saying it's totally not necessary and stuff. I mean, there's protein in meat and everything like that. But by nature, there's, there's this, this, is, this could be debated if you want to debate it, but by nature, like humans are actually herbivores. And we have all the properties of, of herbivores. And a lot of people sort of, you know, they, they think that, um, no, we're clearly meat eaters. Well, not necessarily. And, and some of the arguments for this are the length of our digestion tract, uh, the digestion tract on like um, – on, on meat eaters is, is, is a lot significantly shorter uh, compared to its like its length in ratio to the spine of the animal. So we as humans, we have a, a very long digestive tract, and, and that's sort of to like you know break down the nutrients and the fruit and stuff in a different way. Whereas you know it's different on carnivores, and also on carnivores, uh, one of the other things is like the jaw only opens up and down, like when you think about like coyotes and, and hyenas and stuff, whereas our jaw goes side to side. And, and you know, when I think of going side to side, I just get that vision of a of like a brontosaurus uh, from Jurassic Park or something. Like think about how, you know, that's how like they ate their food and stuff. So, but anyways, that's just something to, uh, maybe we'll talk about it later in the show. But I think that's, this whole animal thing is something that needs to sort of be looked at. And, and it's an important issue because, again, it relates back to this idea of oneness and, and how we treat our animals is evidently how we're treating ourselves. So there you go. That's uh, that's new. That's what's new. That's the video. Check out the website. Show your support for that. And uh, I think, you know, we're all animals in our own way. So with that said, I'm going to bring on my fellow animal, Von Halper, and I'm going to bring you on. Now you know you're listening. So without further ado, da -da -da. click. There we go. You went there. Wow. Went there. Hey, dude. What's up? I was surprised you would you would that you would finally say something about uh you know not eating meat. Um, a lot I'm of people are afraid to do that. I'm trying to you know because that's I mean this whole realization I, I ha uh, there's a new friend of mine and she's like really sort of been pushing this on me and you know it's like if you're serious about not supporting the pain and suffering of animals and that includes like not eating the meat that is supporting mm -hmm. the and it, you know, look at you can look at not eating meat as almost like a, a form of social protest in itself, and something that other people will see, and they'll be like, "Hey, that's you know, like if you're, you're if you're doing that for the reasons you say you're doing that, then that's like kind of a cool thing." So maybe mm -hmm. that'll be the trend, right? And and you also, I mean, the Paleolithic um, diet and everything. Like if you look back at what humans originally ate, like they didn't eat meat. And they didn't eat um, grains either because, like, with bread and everything, a lot of what we eat is all food-like. We're not actually eating things that are even we're even supposed to have. And our body, I mean, it's gotten used to it, and we have the stomach acid to digest it if we have to. But, you know, it, you know, go flash forward 10 years from now, what you're eating is going to make you who you are. And if you want to reach higher levels of consciousness, you know, if you continue eating the stuff that you eat, it's not it, – you're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> 
Yeah, and that was something that came up in the, in our meeting last night with Paradigm Shift because I, 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 you know, so I sort of made a similar point. I said I think diet goes hand in hand with sort of our body vibrating at different levels and thus sort of our consciousness perceiving things in different states of perception, so to speak. Um, but then an, another uh, another guy within within our group, uh, he sort of brought up the point that, like, he, he was just emphasizing the point that so much of it is in our mind to begin with. And if we believe that these foods are having an effect on us, then, then they will more so. But I don't know. Like, I... Mm-hmm. But like, well, I mean, like like I said, like for a lot of people, it's really hard. I personally haven't even gotten there yet because I just I don't I don't actually buy my own food all the way now. I buy some of it, but I don't make enough money, so I live off my parents' food. So I mean, to be healthy, I have to eat meat. But once yeah. I move out, I'm going to switch to a raw diet. But at the same time, like I I see it like for people who still eat meat, at least um, appreciate the fact that an animal gave its life because we've gotten to the point now as a society. We eat meat and we don't care. We don't see where it comes from. You go to a grocery store and it's all conveniently packed up and, and already cut up and doesn't look anything like the animal you're going to eat. It would be really different if you walked in you actually had to cut it off a dead cow yourself. Would you still eat it? You know, Because for a lot of people, I mean, if they had to kill the animal, they wouldn't eat it. And that that shows you that, like, we are just very ignorant what we're really doing and the kind of damage we're doing. Because if you think about it, like, I've I've been working for a grocery store, and I see how much food we throw away. And it's way more than what people buy. But the thing is, is, like, imagine that's just one grocery store at a far corner of the U.S. Every single grocery store, every single fast food, every single restaurant has a whole bunch of meat that's just being killed in, like, every day in millions it's, it's basically just like a giant massacre that we're breeding over and over and over again every single day what kind of effects do you think that has on the consciousness level of the world you know yeah but it's just it's just total disregard for life because they're animals and they're beneath us and i mean it's not like we have that sort of respectful hunt that we would have back in the day and also not to mention the exercise that you would get while hunting something and then you know your your body our bodies are just are just really wreaking um, the results of not doing things naturally. And that is one of the big things. And not to mention, like, in the end, we actually don't even need to have meat to begin with. I mean, yeah. it's it's just, it's plain and simple. And, I mean, uh, the Jericho, the guy I make music with, he, he does not eat meat at all. And uh, he quit a long time ago. And he has become one of the most spiritually enlightened people that I know. And I mean, I honestly do know that a lot of that has to do with the fact of what he puts in his body because it does affect your brain. Because, I mean, I think KRS-One put it best is that food is drugs and that um, everything you put in your body is a chemical. It breaks down your body as chemicals. We should stop calling things food because that's just a word that just kind of makes us forget that it's really drugs that we're putting in our body. And you're a lot of us are just addicted to certain kinds of drugs that aren't natural, not to mention all the stuff that gets put in the meat and all the stuff that gets sprayed on the vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, it, it's it's just it's all drugs. I mean, all these snacks and stuff, they're not they're not food. It's drugs. That's all of it's not food. It's all drugs, even plants. It, all the matter breaks down your body is a bunch of chemicals. And that's why when we learn health class, it, the, the class is called food and drugs, not you know, not just food. And so that's that's just one thing people seem to overlook a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, I, I think it's interesting. I mean, because, yeah, like, I, I wouldn't say, even though humans by default can survive off just vegetables, like, I don't think it's entirely wrong for us to go out of our way to get the protein from other animals to survive. Mm-hmm. Like, again, sort of, that's how we made it this far, right? I mean, yeah. We, the, the protein in the meat like gives us the energy to sort of last through the winters, you know, back when that's that was more the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I agree, like if if we're going to be doing that, we we really need to be mindful of like how that energy is being exchanged, because mm-hmm. especially like when, when you when you look at the animals and like the way we're treating them, like. I think this has come up in a past episode, but the idea that like the fear that these animals are going through, like that state the toxin. Meat, yeah, yeah, and it releases toxins, and, and 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 you know, just as a sort of more sort of uh, metaphysical way of like, it, it there's an the energy to it, the negative energy to it, is still very much with that. So you're like putting that directly into you. So I mean, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's so it's so obvious how, how much like food plays an effect on on who we are, and I think changing your diet is like one of the first essential steps if, if you really want to just progress forward, right? Like, yeah, and if you think about what changing your diet does for you, think about how we change the diet that the animals kept in captivity to things that they're not supposed to eat. So it's like eating a cow that ate McDonald's. Yeah, really. Eh? Yeah, yeah. We're just really getting like the crap end of. Yeah, just a conveyor belt. But yeah, like um, oh yeah. Sorry, I I had another thought. And I just sort of lost it. No, bring it back. <laughs> uh, don't worry, it's it's gone. It'll, it'll come uh, back. It's like a, it's like a boomerang. It'll come back in like two hours, and you have to start up a new radio show. But um, no, I another thing I noticed lately, which is really weird for me, but kind of interesting and cool. A lot of people have been coming to me now, um, seeking information. And a lot of times, I, I first I pass them off <laughs> to other information that I got my information from because I love building with people and I'm always open to doing it. But I also feel like it's better that I send them the things that completely enlighten me first. Um, but I mean, and it, it, it's just lately I've been getting hit by so many emails and so many messages and requests for me to do things as far as teaching goes. And um, ever since I. I I picked up the idea that I should be a teacher. And I mean, it was just the idea in my head. I didn't go out and tell anyone about it. I think I told a few people that were my close friends, but none of these people know these strangers that are coming up to me now. And it's interesting, once you get an idea in your head of what you want to be and you really start submitting yourself to that, it really does come to fruition. I mean, like, I've known this, but it's interesting to see it apply to my life. And, I mean, I don't know if you've had similar experiences where you said you were going to do this and everything just fell into place for you. But that's sort of what's been happening to me, and it's amazing. Yeah, well, that, that's that's good to hear, man. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's sort of that's sort of we we were talking earlier today. I, I put up that post on my wall on Facebook.com/slash Skull Babylon. Feel free to add me as a friend if, if you haven't yet. But um, it, it was a little within the post. I was talking a little bit about this idea of reincarnation, um, mm -hmm. indirectly more so, and. Uh, I think that's like the the whole topic of reincarnation is something that we really haven't gone into on Paradigm Shift Radio, and uh, I'm just okay. We got about nine minutes until I want to bring Scott on, but just in terms of reincarnation, you know, there's a there's a lot of interesting ideas to it, and, and it, obviously it's not something that's sort of like talked about uh, within uh, like our schools, you know, if if you're mm -hmm. in like a public school and stuff like that, and then you get like this idea of like YOLO and stuff, right? Where oh wow, <laughs> like which is yeah. just like. Seems you really like that was don't. Somebody just trolled, like some troll mastered up that idea just to troll society. But I think it was you know, great. Um, yeah, yeah. But but, but uh, did you see my ahead. post on karma? Uh, my uh, video post. That I made? You know what? I, I haven't yet. I haven't watched that video. I was actually yet. talking about reincarnation and how people always try to apply oh, karma yeah. and reincarnation to linear time, which I don't right, think right. is really natural to do because time doesn't really exist. I mean, and that's why I shared the egg story. I don't know if people have read that yet by Andy yeah. Weir. It's yeah. an amazing story, which basically puts into perspective for you that um, you will probably be born in the past or maybe the future or maybe, but time doesn't really exist. When you're reborn again, I mean, that's the thing. You have been everyone on this earth is a general idea. And, you know, it's it, when you think about it that way, then karma and reincarnation. And when you say, oh, it'll be in my next life, you're really affecting yourself. Whenever you hurt someone, you're really hurting yourself in a literal sense because they really are you because we are a collective consciousness. But that means more than that. That means that we're currently both the same person right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so if I were to hurt you, I'd literally be hurting myself in real time. And it's not just a mental thing, you know? And I think that's the, the big mistake that a lot of people try to make and also why people think they can debunk reincarnation and karma because they think that well in in the, the law of attraction because they think that well if i could if people can get whatever they want then why would there be hungry people somewhere else why can't they just get food if they're hungry they should already want it it should come into being well if everyone else is hogging and hurting them which is really hurting themselves you know it's just it's all one giant you know hologram of someone learning and maturing like yeah. a god that's maturing through people you know which is us yeah, like, the, the, you know, there's even sort of this idea that each one of us, each one of our, like, personalities or whatever, uh, it, it's just like a leaf off of, like, another tree. And through these lifetimes, with each 
sort of incarnation, uh, the personality, I mean, you could sort of debate this, I guess, and this isn't totally my perspective, it's just one way of looking at it, but, like, the personality is, is sort of, like, discarded or, or something, and uh, so, I mean, it's not like, when, when we talk about reincarnation, it's not like we're literally the same person, like, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, just in a different scenario, like, it's more so each time we're, like, sort of reincarnated, we're, like, another leaf of the branch that those people, too, were leaves of, so, like, our source like who we are right now and like who we even think we are is only like a fraction of like who and what like we really are and i've sort of said this before but more so you, know, you can use the term like oversoul i, I guess mm -hmm. you could say so each one of uh these leaves again uh is absorbing light and then like through photosynthesis is like transferring the energy back to like the root of the tree so in that sense like nothing is wasted even though the leaf might fall to the ground like the energy that was like transmuted by that leaf still exists like within the tree sort of thing so that's a that's just kind of one way of looking at it but but again like i think you know reincarnation if you can sort of get this idea around your head that like you know maybe there is this idea of that we may come back then to me at least that like gives me motivation to like help create a future worth living mm -hmm. in again which i think is like a pretty cool thing and, and i think if more people thought like that they would be like more motivated and uh, less like just trying to find happiness and like material concerns and stuff right which is exactly. a big case of today I think that that um I, I do think there is something to the ancient belief that your reincarnation is based off of how you perform this life, what you'll be next, because I think that you have to go down to be able to come back up and say you are really far down when you die, then you're going to end up having to go down a lot further to learn how to come back up from that faster. And I, I, I almost feel like that's a learning experience. And maybe we are, uh, you know, maybe there are, because because we live in a separate sort of reality, you know, which is in separate bodies as, as far as separation is. And even though this could all be an illusion, et cetera, and it probably is, I'm just saying, like, it, it really seems like there is a cer certain structure to um, being reborn. Because from what I remember in my past lives, you know, it, 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 they were all very different. I don't even know if I really want to go into this right now. But yeah, yeah. It's one thing personal. I'm really excited for is Cloud Atlas, though. That oh. Yeah, really, eh? Like that, you're you're right, and that uh, that movie's all about reincarnation, of course. So it's it's sort of bringing it into the mainstream. I which, can't believe it, that that's oh, coming out. I I saw yeah, that and I was like, I'm excited about that too, man. And we talked about that before, but you're right because I mean, again, and it's coming from the Wachowski. Uh, you I know. know. Like, like obviously, you know, having done the Matrix and stuff, so, I mean, the yeah. Matrix, like, drops this huge bomb that's, like, sort of encoded and stuff. Now, you know, you get movies like Inception, which are bringing, like, dreaming and mm -hmm. lucid dreaming into the mainstream, and now Cloud Atlas, which is bringing the And, you know, the best part about that is being able to go up to normal people and say, hey, did you see have Cloud you Atlas? Yes. What, did you, what do you think about reincarnation? Yes, Just like dude, when I like, said, you saw uh, Inception? What do you I'm think excited. about lucid dreaming? I'm excited for that, man. But but how many people are going to see Cloud Atlas? I don't know. Like, it doesn't look like it's well, going to be Tom one that Hanks everybody... Well, it's got in it. I think yeah. a lot more than we expect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, true. I, and, I, and I hope it does reach our demographic as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, but but you're right because even even uh, and again like I'm I love movies and I pay attention to like what comes out in movies and stuff right because it's a lot you know again like the universe is trying to communicate through itself through like e everything I including movies so um, mm -hmm. even if it is like subconscious of the people who made it there's still like stuff going on there and uh, it, going back to like this idea of you know referring to movies like even when the movie 2012 came out you know a lot of people just like took a crap on that movie but then mm -hmm. I'm just like oh I, I like this because now I have like a now jump I can off talk about 2012 with other people right and just be like yeah. and, and there's actually there's actually an old video that maybe i'll link it into this um because it's it, it's almost in my old channels but it was back in the college and it was us like going around and like asking people to be like hey what are your thoughts on like that new movie 2012 so then you know you might get some people who just sort of like talk about the fact that it's a movie and there's like yeah you know special effects independence day cool blah 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 <laughs> but then like the whole 2012 like other mayan thing you know they might just sort of be like meh yeah, you know whatever i heard about it, no big deal another like you know y2k etc cetera, etc cetera. but then you get other people who are just like no no you know like i've done more research on that i'm you know there's there's something to it it's, it's part of like this cycle and, and this whole coming into awareness sort of thing exactly and, and, and like, I, I just think about the children that. that will go with their parents parents to see cloud atlas yeah that would be cool man what that yeah, will that... put in their heads because there were movies that we had when we were growing up that we were lucky enough to see in the movie theater that made us think we had some really strange ideas and versions of movies remember i don't know if you remember this pokemon uh, the first movie with mewtwo yes and the kind of concept that movie brought up to children was incredible 
Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and it's it's just we we you know I I look back at certain things and the Matrix was a huge one too. But the thing is, is like it what's interesting to me now is like you can actually I can almost tell who's seen what movie after knowing them for a while because I'll be like, have you seen the Matrix? They'll be like, no. I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> you can just tell by by you know because it's, a lot of the times, especially when we're growing up, are the movies we see kind of influence us in what we're going to start looking yeah. up because it puts ideas in our head that we go, I've never heard of that idea. What is that? What what is the idea that this could be a dream? You know that sort of thing that yeah. this couldn't even be a reality. And that was a big one that the Wachowski brothers crammed into our heads. And I think we're gonna get that again in Cloud Atlas. Like, there's, exactly. even if you look, if you look in the trailer, there's some, uh, uh, there's some like trippy stuff that's going on. Like, it, I, I think that. they get a little like transdimensional. Like, it, you know, I, I saw some stuff floating around, and they weren't in space. So, yeah, I've we'll, we'll watched it about that. like thirty times already. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, that comes out in like less than two weeks, I think, man. Oh. Well, and then oh, we'll really? have to come back. We'll have to, I think so. Yeah, it's like oh, end of man. October. That's right. Time is flying by right now. We'll, we'll have to uh, come back and talk about that again. But for now, Vaughn, I'm going to have to let you go because we got okay. Scott Love who's coming on the line. But uh, for those interested, check out horserising.com, yes? Yeah, and I appreciate everything you're doing for the Paradigm Shift community. And we are still working on ours here. We're actually working a lot on ours through the website, which is why we're making it a medium for everyone to get information from, including a library now. Word, word. But, I mean, what you've been doing and the reporting and everything, it, it's incredible. And I'm, I'm glad that I met you and, and found out about all this. Oh, right back at you, man. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure working with you. And, 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 and I use the term work loosely because it's more so play than anything. So it's a yeah. pleasure playing alongside you so cool man all right so check out vaughn's websites and i'm sure we'll hear from him again so vaughn i'm gonna let you go all right take care dude peace okay so there we go and uh just before we bring scott love on um first of all if you're listening to this in the future uh off of blog talk radio um feel free to check out the youtube link as well the youtube always goes up a couple days after we do the live show but the youtube link is just something uh it's a little bit more convenient to share with people it will have the show notes embedded into the video so you can check those out as well and if you have not yet feel free to like us on facebook at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and also check out paradigm shift central dot com and that's got the directory to all the paradigm shift communities across the globe because uh, you know, at this point, I'm not sure how many people we have in terms of new audience members, but for those who may be unfamiliar, Paradigm Shift is uh, the radio station is one thing, but we're constantly reporting on the idea that there's a bunch of Paradigm Shift communities all throughout the globe. So if you're interested in starting up your own, go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com as well as Facebook facebook.com slash paradigm shift central and there's some tips there on how to get one started in your area and we're always encouraging people to get there's going and uh you know just think of it as like planting a seed and growing a small plant so don't try and rush it it's a natural process just keep moving forward and things will happen and feel free to let us know how things are happening later on in uh in the future and uh we're always looking for people to call in who we can talk to on air and hear how things are going paradigm shift wise on their end so that said, we're going to bring Scott Love on. And again, Scott Love is one of the coordinators for the three days of light gathering happening very soon. And the website for that, they check out, even while we're doing a little talk here, is 3dlgathering.com. So again, if you haven't, excuse me, if you haven't yet, uh, feel free to message the Facebook page and get your get your name in for a chance to win the draw tonight that we'll be having for those who are interested in going to 3DL because they're they're gracious enough to give you a chance to win all access passes. So that's thanks to Scott here. So Scott, if you are listening, and I know you are, we're going to bring you on right about now. So, hello, Scott, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Perfect, man. Excellent. Okay. Thanks for thanks for being on the show, man. This is this is really exciting getting getting to sort of work alongside you in in all this, you know. So yeah, it's, it's been it's been great. It's uh, really like the work you're doing as well, man. Thank you. It's uh, this work is it's kind of important. Like you, I heard you guys talking about, you know, how do you consider it work? Um, but it's it's good stuff that you're doing, you know, getting this message, getting this information out there, and. Uh, so I appreciate that. On behalf of everyone, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, man. And, and, and you know, I've, I've sort of said this before, like, all of us have a role to play. And I think what you're doing role-wise is, like, so very, very cool. I mean, 
did this whole 3DL process just explain to us like where did this idea even come from? Okay, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it's. The three days of light was originally going to be a one day event that was uh it was it was this vision I had to have a whole bunch of people gathered together and holding on to these these crystals or these stones and uh going through a series of workshops and ceremony and then at the end we we're gonna have a giant ceremony we we're gonna throw these crystals in the water to kind of activate that water with our intent. And uh, I wanted to do that in Detroit. Uh, but it's, I don't know if you guys know about Detroit. It gets kind of cold around November. So huh. it's, uh, you're right. So it's Asheville just felt really good. Now, also, there's a connection I have with Asheville that goes back to last year, um, Emergence Earth organized an event in Sedona, Arizona called the 11-11-11 Gathering. And okay. when we first started, you know, getting the downloads on that, it was the three ty the three spaces that keep coming to mind was Asheville, Sedona, and Mount Shasta. And we eliminated Mount Shasta because, again, weather-wise. And uh, it ended up being Sedona. And then when I was in Sedona... Uh, it just kept coming clear that I'm going to end up going to Asheville. That I was going to go to Asheville and do some scouting work. And uh, everything just fell in line since then. And I'll tell you what, I am so happy to be here. I'm in Asheville now. I've been here for a couple of months. The people are incredible. Uh, the community is amazing. Uh, the culture of the city is ridiculous. It's just there's a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of light and love already in this city, so yeah. you know it makes perfect sense that it's it's happening here. Yeah, yeah, I've I've noticed that too. I, you know, Asheville seems to be a real hot spot for things happening, and I know even uh, our good friend Jordan sort of made his way there, and uh, you know that that was again that's that's just sort of like coincidence in terms of 3DL being there and and Jordan from Spirit Science already being there as well as a right. couple other people and and I know you guys have sort of uh, been chatting as well cuz he's going to be involved with uh, the 3 Days of Light event Spirit Science team is going to be doing some uh presentations or something I'm not even too sure exactly what hmm. they're going to be doing but uh yeah Scott can you tell us a little bit about like what people can expect to happen at uh this 3DL coming up in terms of uh the, some of the guest speakers and Anything else? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's three days of light. That, that should tell you something. It's uh, actually we, the title came to, you know, there's been this this vibe, this almost like this anxiety around uh, the 2012 thing that people were talking about earlier, and somewhere in those there's this talk of three days of darkness, and mm -hmm. You know, and, pe and, and, and the idea of being in dark for three days and, you know, so dark that you can't do anything, you know, well, let's counter that concept. Let's not say three days of darkness. Let's, let's, let's really bring in the light. Let's really hold our vibrations so high that yeah. we actually light up. So we put that out there, and people responded. I mean, it's, it's so many people. There's, we would have to have five festivals in a row to get all the workshop facilitators and bands that want to participate in this. Um, but we only have three days. So, uh, let's see, Charles Gilchrist, you know, world international right. known sacred geometry master is coming to not only just talk about sacred geometry, he's holding a six-hour sacred geometry workshop that is really intensive. And that's going to be on Saturday. Uh, he's also going to be doing a workshop on mandala painting. Uh, he's there's you know you mentioned spirit science. They're bringing their entire library, and they're going to be setting up an actual uh, theater. You know it's called Spirit Science Theater, and uh, they're going to be showing different films, doing you know having discussions and you know. Uh, Merkaba activations, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, we have Karen Wessling uh, from New Hampshire. She's a pet whisperer. She'll be talking about that. Uh, Carlos Cedillo, uh, also known as Cosmic Jaguar. So much is going on. 
Uh, Zenora Saluda is going to be there talking about Zen energy. Uh, I, I, we have about 60 workshop facilitators, and there's no way I could list them all right here. Oh, Jackie Domingo yeah. is coming from uh, – she she was at the 11-11-11 gathering last year as a guest speaker. I'm really excited about her. She's going to be talking about um, sacred shamanism and uh, – you know, we have different ceremonies. We have the intention setting ceremony, the water blessings. We're creating a labyrinth. We're going to have this place called Tantricic, uh, Tantricity. There's uh, sacred fire ceremonies. There's angelic realm, uh, realm invocations, uh, Mayan sacred fire circles, all sorts of really amazing, heart-expanding things that give people an opportunity to really express themselves, try something new, and feel safe at the same time. It's like there's this, yeah. you know, I've heard it referred to as the closet, you know. It seems to me that there's millions of people coming out of that spiritual closet now, uh, <laughs> and we just want to give them some safe, supported respite space to do that. In. Absolutely. So. Yeah, for sure, man. And I totally understand where you're coming from because, you know, this is, uh, like, that's very similar to, like, what the whole Paradigm Shift Communities is about. It's about creating that space. Because we need that. We we need that space, you know. So many of us have spent a lot of time, uh, and I know this from personal experience, have spent a lot of time just doing a lot of research and reading books and, like, sort of walking around on my own. And, and it wasn't until I started looking for other people that I started connecting with them that these conversations really started happening. So, like, this whole festival, this whole Three Days of Light thing is, like, a continuation of the conversation on such a grand scale. And I'm really looking forward to, to being able to help out with the documentation process because even for the people who aren't going to be uh, at the event, like they're still going to be affected by it. Like there, there's oh, yeah. be, like energies that are going to be created <laughs> by it that are going to, you know, are, are going to be quite long lasting. And again, like this is, you know, this is sort of leading up to the whole like, uh, you know, what's happening in the end of December, which is obviously, you know, just like a date. But I mean, what we want to make of it is really up to us. But like this is, uh, yeah, this is like definitely something that. I think is going to make like a, a pretty big impression, and and I hope it's something that we'll see more of, or or at least, uh, you know, in, in the sense that like I hope we see like more people creating similar scenarios in in their own communities, and, and just like getting together and and taking turns like trying to teach each other things because you know as much yeah, as yeah, like, that's what's up. Yeah, like uh, you, you you have you said you have like sixty people coming in and doing presentations. So imagine if like those sixty people or whatever teach like a hundred. Like how 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 many people? Okay, how many people do you think are actually going to be uh, at the event? Like, is it hundreds of thousands? No, it's it's a little, little pro. You know, it's hard to say really. Um, we have uh, our goal here, right? is to be prepared for twenty five hundred people. You know, but uh, you know, I've I've heard this thing somewhere in the past that says where two or more are gathered. You know what I mean? So it's, it's somewhere between two and twenty five hundred is what I'm hoping for, but as no seriously, we're probably looking at close to fifteen hundred people altogether, and that that's uh, I don't know if that's including the Asheville community either because there's a huge Asheville supporting network here that and it's growing every single day. Uh, so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if twenty five people showed up, twenty five hundred people showed up rather, and I wouldn't be surprised if more than that showed up. Uh, yeah. it's, it's really whatever spirit wants it to be. You know, we're, the, we're holding space. We're, we're, you know, we're bringing people together to talk about community culture, natural health and wellness, spiritual development, and sustainable living. And under that canopy, whoever is going to show up and feel that is going to show up and feel it. We just want to make sure that we can take care of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be cool, man. It, it's going to be exciting. And uh, I'm just trying to think of, uh, I mean, without without it actually happening yet, it, all, all we can really do is just sort of talk about it, like how excited we are about it, what what's going to happen there eventually. But uh, right. is, there infor is there information on your website if people want to get like an idea of uh, the guest speakers and stuff, they can visit your websites for that as well. Absolutely. Believe, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there's two websites I'd like to pass on. Yeah. One is emergenceearth.com, and that talks that, that speaks to what our mission is. Uh, Emergence Earth is here to be a resource generator for the 
like communities around the world. You know, we want to be a reference source. We want to be a community portal, and this is what we're creating. And Three Days of Life is our first uh, foray into doing big festivals. 11-11-11 uh, was big in consciousness. It was big because of the network around the world. Um, it wasn't that large of an event. You know, I think the total number registered was 1,300 and uh, from 35 different countries. So that was pretty cool. Uh, this is So this is like... And the way this is all structured is that it's a profit share model to where any money that comes in from ticket sales, any money that comes in from food, it's distributed to all the people that are helping to create it, including oh, cool. the facilitators and including the bands and including the you know, people that are coming to volunteer. That's so, right. That's yeah, there's no big corporation behind this. It's all it's all, you know, real people, so that's I right. think that's a that's another reason that makes it uh, definitely worth supporting. But um, yeah, man. Like, uh, like what in terms of because you know we, we we sort of mentioned this like in terms of like encouraging spiritual growth. Like, I guess sort of if you don't mind, just sort of looking at things from your own perspective. Like, what do you feel is important that you hope people like take with them from this event that will like help help them on their own spiritual path? I mean, I know that's sort of a broad question. Yeah. But what, what do you feel personally no, I... is important for people to like learn from this? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind, and this is like bursting out of my heart right now, is that we are not alone. There are mm -hmm. brothers and sisters of light all over the world. What does that mean, brothers and sisters of light? You know, it, it's, I'm not going to get all preachy on you. But I'm just saying that, you know, there are light beings, people who are bringing light into the darkness. You know, people that are that are that are doing good works, and you know, maybe they're doing it anonymously. You know, or maybe they're not, you know, they're, they're not getting the support that they would like. You know, well, we want to say, hey, we're here to support you. And so that's that's the first thing, you know, is the sense of community. So that when mm -hmm. people leave and on the back of our program that they're going to get during the event is a place for 500 emails. So where they can mm -hmm. actually connect with people, you know, and then expand it. You know, it's a soul star family reunion is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, so if yeah. they get information, they get knowledge, and they can get practice. They can get practice doing these ceremonies. They can have, yeah. you know, they have that the experience, the memories, and uh, you know, then they come and want to do it again next year, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's something that I, I was actually trying to articulate earlier um, while we were talking. But this idea that you know people go and they learn stuff from the other teachers, and then with them back into their own community and they themselves like step into the role as teacher like this is this is very much and you, and you kind of said this is like a light worker training camp in mm. uh, <clears throat> in, in a lot yeah. of ways you know and, and i think even if uh even maybe it will get to the point when <clears throat> oh, yeah, excuse me it's in my throat but well maybe it'll get to the point where we're like we're actually referring to it as that Ugh. <clears throat> no, we can we can start now if you want to there you go. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a light worker. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a summer camp, and it's, we have uh, all sorts of buildings. It's, we're on a lake. And check this out. Yeah. The, the facility itself, Camp Rockmont, is an incredible facility. And there's something there, man. There's something about uh, the energy that permeates out of this space. Because a little bit, we'll give you a little, you know, sidebar history note. Uh, it's on the it's on the same location as the world famous. Uh, Black Mountain College, which is where Buckminster Fuller developed many of his ideas. You know, I heard somewhere along the way that Einstein taught there, and I don't know, I haven't read that myself, but I've heard people say that. And his was really cool, talking about, you know, counterculture, uh, the happenings, you know, like the, the beat happenings from the 50s and 60s. I guess they got their start on this property. So it's always been like this bastion of progressive thinking and feeling, you know. So... Three Days of Light falls right in line with that. You know, I'm not saying that we are on the level of Buckminster Fuller or the happenings or, you know, the beat artists that were just blowing up. But I like to, I like to think that we are uh, a little more progressive in the way we want to do things. You know, we want to create a world that is harmonious. We want to create a world that has a lot less chaos in it. And the four pillars for this world that we 
are inspired to create are the four things I mentioned earlier, community and culture, sustainable living, natural health and wellness, and spiritual development. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I think, um, I, I, I'm just trying to think of what more to say about this story. I'm not totally on the vault tonight. That cough threw me off. Oh, no, but, you're uh, fine. I'm, I, okay, okay, no, I was... Well, you're doing a great job, I don't thank wanna, you. Oh, yeah, let me just uh, take a breath for a second, but what I was, because uh, well, when you say, like, the inspiration for this three days of light, like, I, the whole thing, calling it three days of light, like, that's something really interesting to me, and maybe we'll just get a little bit away from uh, the topic of the event itself for a second, well, but that's I mean, fine, yeah. like, I think, like, the whole topic of uh, three days of darkness, like, that's, um, c- could you maybe, um, are you are you familiar with that? Like, that's something that you're sort of looking into? Yeah, you know, I spent a little bit of time, um, and so the idea is, and I've heard a couple different references to it. Uh, one is that it's been there's this historical legend or um, stories passed down through the years with different cultures, where there was this period of time in the past, several times actually, where the sun disappeared for three days. And in that time, there was chaos and confusion. And I've heard that that is related to uh, what happened, something that might happen, you know, of the of the number of infinite things that could possibly happen yeah. when uh, when 2012 rolls through. Um, is that you know, as we go through the galactic center, uh, something's going to happen. Uh, whether we're going to get blasted with energy, or you know, the, the skies are going to trip out. You know, it's going to be dark. So there's just there's different sources to where this information is coming from. Uh, and really, you can just look it up. Three days of darkness, and you'll get information uh-huh. on it. And so, yeah, the idea is, you know, it's like it's like this. When I know that I'm that I'm in a, in a space where my head is a little twisted, uh, the best thing for me to do is to counter that with something positive, something uh, refreshing, something beautiful, something loving. And so that's what the idea is, you know. If so, everyone's got all this. Like I said, this 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 anxiety about what is going to happen. Not everyone, but you know, and you know what's going to happen in you know, December twenty first, two thousand twelve. Well, I don't know, but I know that a month prior to that, we're going to be having a damn good time and lighting it up in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> Lighting it up. You said it, man. No, that's a. I, I think the whole three days of darkness thing. One idea that comes to mind that I've had. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, jeez, sorry. But uh, it's kind of it's kind of a big idea actually. It's one that sort of like has resonated with me. This idea, and it's sort of been brought up in the spirit science videos. This idea that like the three days of darkness also like correlates to like this shift in dimensions where we sort of exist within this void, so to speak. But Imagine, if you will, and uh, we'll, I'll sort of get your insight on this in a second, Scott. But like, imagine, if you will, that like, if there was an event, and whether this is uh, you know 2012 or whatever or something, it could be something entirely separate. But knowing that we as humans are like capable of experiencing uh, states that we do through experiences, like with dimethyltryptamine, for example. Like, imagine if there was, like, an event, and it could be caused by a solar storm or something, where, like, everyone has, like, a simultaneous DMT-like uh, experience. Like, that's the best way I could refer to it as, where, like, you know, their third eyes literally open. <coughs> and they're sort of experiencing these, like, higher dimensional energies. And then sort of what happens out of that is that, like, some people come back and they, like, remember this experience and they're just like, whoa, whoa, you know, like, it's all right. Awesome like interconnected and one and everything and then like and that there's like higher dimensional realities and, you know there's no such thing as empty space like they come back with this realization and then you'll get like other people who will like come back but like they'll just uh it'll be as if they like woke up from a dream that they don't remember or they'll like see it totally differently or something like i think that's just uh that's one idea again because who knows what's going to happen in this infinite possibility of things but that's right infinite possibilities that I'm sort of intrigued well, you know, here's, 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 here's my thoughts on that. You know, you mentioned DMT and, uh, you know, alternate state of consciousness. Uh, that's, that, that, that's not what this is about. Uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's what it's, it's, there's a place for that and there's a place for everything. Um, I want to tell you about uh, a light body activation I went to last Saturday where, um, 
my body was broken. As you know, I had a pretty serious fall. Uh, yeah. I fell 12 feet off a loft, busted my head, cracked some ribs. Um, and <clears throat> uh, about a week later, I went to this light body Merkaba activation that uh, this amazing, this amazing practitioner, Phoenix, um, who was connected through, uh, I met him through the, the spirit science crew at Bhakti Bliss. Uh, he led us through these, these, this renunciation ceremony and then this, this, this breathing, this, this like really intense breath work. And I'll tell you what, man, I had the most amazing, profound, out-of-body and inner-body experience mm-hmm. that literally blows away any trip I've ever been on. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's, it's yeah. like, it, it, and not only that, bro, the healing that took place. And my body, my body is not healed, but took a huge step towards being more whole after that event. You know, mm-hmm. so that's 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 that uh that so now, how does that tie into the twenty first? You know, yeah, who knows? You know, I know mm-hmm. that uh. I know anything's possible. You know, if you stand too close to a stove, you start getting warm. So, you know, everything influences everything else. It's kind of cool like that. Yeah, totally. And and again, that's something just to reiterate for those who maybe haven't listened always in the past. And, and we said this before, you know, when, when I referred to a uh, collective DMT-like experience, like we're not advocating the use of, because like what Scott just said, like these altered states of consciousness, if that's something you want to pursue, are naturally accessible, like, without the additional, like, external, uh, you know, like, by going internally. And and I think that's something that is very enticing for someone who might be interested in, uh, you know, attending the Three Days of Light conference themselves, is, is the idea of actually getting a chance to experience uh, something very um, inner-worldly, so to speak, by by being part of the workshops that you're going to be offering at the Three Days of Light event. And I think that's something that uh, I'll definitely have to take part in myself. Like Phoenix, or, sorry, just to confirm, will, will Phoenix be doing these uh, at the Three Days of Light or someone else doing a Merkaba activation or something similar? Uh, Phoenix, it's, I'm not sure. I think he's actually going to be in Bali or Australia. Right. I know that he he would like to be here, and my goodness, I definitely would love for him to be here. Um, but you know, Spirit Science will be holding it down. Uh, we're going to be doing all sorts of other type of yeah. I know I know for a fact that there's several Merkaba activation meditations yeah. that are going on. I don't know if they're going to be as as intense as Phoenix's, and, and you know, I don't know if it's going to be breathwork oriented. You know, there's there's different paths you can take to activate your Merkaba. You know, you, you can do it just by, you know, I've heard people say that it's as simple as once you get practice, you know, like that whole flame on thing, you know, or, uh, you know, just, you just say, you know, you just, you just activate it with your consciousness. In fact, I just watched a video that a friend of mine, Sayward Kazan created about a year ago. And it talks about how it speaks to, you know, if you really want to open up your third eye, you just tell your third eye, it's time to open up. Yeah. You know, it's a little more detailed than that. In fact, I just put uh, her video on my Facebook profile. You know, it's a great video. Um, so it's it's there's many different paths, you know. And that's what's really cool about this Three Days of Light as well, is that we're not telling anybody to believe anything. We're just right. saying, come share your story. Come share your gifts. Come relate with other people. And... People are going to pick up what they want. It's like a salad bar. You know, you pick up what you want and you leave what you don't want. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an appropriate med- uh, metaphor for it because, you know, I think that's all that's all we can really do is just look at everything as information and sort of try it out, you know, like see, just chew on it for a bit. If it tastes good, swallow it, and if not, then sort of spit it out, right? Like I think taking in the variety of things that are available to us is like one of the big experiences that this life is about. So if, uh, you know, I, I, the the term spiritual tourist almost comes to mind, but I think, um, an event like this is, is, is good in that sense that you can sort of see a little bit of noise on your end there, Scott. But, uh, I'm just saying there's a little bit of extra noise. A little bit of noise? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's because I was moving things. Yeah, it's just a little extra sensitive. But 
what uh you know I, I again I think it's great that we can be able to bring all of these different methods, techniques, and teachings in, into a single spot. So I know that's what Three Days of Light is, is all about. And I thank you again for really being able to set this up. And I'm really looking forward to just being able to be a part of it in, in multiple ways. So whether I'm going to be behind the camera and doing filming when I'm there, or uh, just like chilling out and being part of a you know a, a meditation or a Merkaba action. Oh, so, that just reminds me. We at yeah. eleven eleven on uh, Saturday the third at eleven o'clock p.m. Uh, we are going to be doing a global meditation uh, that's going to be, that's being organized by Jonah Bolt and right, right. Uh, that's uh, it's 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 going to be amazing. Now there's a few surprises with that. I'm not really sure exactly what's going to be going on, but I know that we're going to be broadcasting it on his show, hopefully on your show. On uh, uh, J. Gabriel Cavazos is organizing um, yeah. a way for us to plug this in so that people all over the world can start watching workshops through the internet at three, that are taking place at Three Days of Light. And that meditation will also be a part of that process. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, th thanks to technology, even for those not at Three Days of Light, we'll be able to still get some of the experience of it, even if you're just uh, right. being able to tune in through live casts and post recordings of some of the lectures. Because, yeah, no, I I think we can't, you know, just we can't keep this information just for the people who, who are fortunate enough to be there. Like part of it is just getting it, accepting it as information, and then doing what we need to to get it out there to other people. So, Scott, is there is there anything else about Three Days of Light that that you would like to mention? Yeah, um, you know, for those people that are coming, um, be be prepared for, you know, cool nights. It's going to be uh, it's going to be chilly. It's going to be chilly, and it's autumn in North Carolina. You know, so if you're going to be in a tent, or if you're going to be in the rustic campgrounds, um, the rustic cabins, bring extra clothes, bring extra blankets, bring uh, stuff to stay warm with, um, and. Uh, be prepared to have a blast because I mean the music is off the chain too. We've been talking about yeah. the uh, the workshops. I mean the music is incredible. I mean we're gonna have grains of sound, aligning minds, DJ Cry, Dink, Soul Asylum, Flux Capacitor, Blue Black Owl, Green Sunshine, Process, Form, Scott Lynch, Tempest. Oh my God, it just goes on. It's just as long as the uh, is the workshop list. So it's like there, there are people. For an amazing price, get to come camp out with amazing people from all over the world. Listen to some quality music, participate in some really deep workshops and some really deep ceremonies, and you know, come to that come to that heart space, and and then be informed, inspired, motivated, and you know. Go home and, and spread that energy, those seeds in their community. That's what this is. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on your radio show. Oh, so thanks again, man. Like, and, and I'm glad we'll be able to uh, get those tickets out to those couple extra lucky winners who will uh, be attending the Three Days of Light gathering with us as well. Like, that's that's a huge thing, man. Because uh, I know, you know, like just to be able to be uh, very uh, gracious of you to to do that and offer that extra spot. So I'll definitely be dressing warm when I'm there. Being a Canadian, I, I know I'm quite familiar with how to dress warm, but I'm right? looking forward to it, man. So I'm from Detroit, cool. I'm used to it as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Um, now, before I let you go, because we're going to be moving into our group meditation soon, is there anything you would like to uh, just sort of add to this group meditation in terms of, like, an intention that you think we should sort of have going into it? Yeah, uh, th thank you. Um, you know, let's – we don't have to wait until November 2nd to enter into our heart space and to turn our, our lights on. You know, let's right now visualize – people all over the world being activated, you know, getting into their third eye, uh, activating their DNA, um, having blessing. You know, you can, you, can, you can have a renunciation ceremony in your shower in the morning, you know. There's so many things you can do on a day-to-day -day basis, moment-to-moment basis, little things, you know. Uh, 
there's there's reference in the Bible where um, someone asked, you know, Jesus, you know, when and where am I supposed to pray? And he says, live your life as if it's prayer. Because it is. The things we do on a moment-to-moment basis, every single decision we make is a dimensional shifter. You know, if you turn right, you're turning right. You're not going into the dimension had you turned left. So just be mindful and bring that light right now, and then bring it again in uh, Asheville. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a that's a good point. Um, something that's sort of been mentioned before this idea that like, yeah, with every choice we we make, we're aligning ourselves to another one of those infinite parallel realities. So we have a lot of control in in terms of free will as to like which direction we want to put ourselves in. So very right. cool. And, and, I, and uh, I just had a pretty harsh reminder myself within the last 24 hours about how, you know, making irresponsible personal decisions can have an effect on other people. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness, you know, um, nobody was hurt. And, you know, it's, it's not ugly or anything that, but it's just, it's, it's around us every, every, every day we see it, you know, so let's make responsible decisions. That's right. Yeah, responsibility is a noble cause. So, yeah, we got to make smart decisions, even small ones and big ones. So, even including what food you're putting into your body, going back to that. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that piece, too. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that some more. So, uh, Scott, um, just now, would, would you be comfortable actually uh, leading us into this meditation? Is that something uh, you're familiar with at all? Yeah, I, I can. I'm just a little on the spot, but sure. absolutely. I'd have yeah. no problem doing that. Yeah, no, I, I, right. I welcome. So, if uh, if everybody would like to, let's just get comfortable going into this. And uh, Scott, just sort of set it up as uh, as you feel fit, and and then okay. sort of cue me, and then I'll cue the music, and then we'll uh, bring you back on once we're done the meditation. So. All right, excellent. So, uh, let's all just take a second and be mindful of our breath. Let's just take a couple really deep breaths. And maybe release it in in a sound, like an ah sound or an ohm sound. We just breathe it in deep, maybe hold it for a minute, and then release it. And let's do that three times. Um, ah, like that. Ah. Let's feel that. Let's really feel that. Let's feel that goodness inside of ourselves coming out. Let's let it activate every cell of our body. Let's be present of our space. Be aware of our connection to the earth. Let's be aware of our connection to the heavens. Let's allow ourselves to be the bridge between the heaven and the earth, the masculine and the feminine. Let's forgive ourselves for decisions that have been less than our highest self. Let's allow others to be forgiven. And let's feel that center inside of us that divine spark. And with every breath we take from this point on, as you start the music, let's let that heart light expand and grow. Namaste.
Ah, uh, so here we are. Focus on that breath. Allow ourselves to come back into this room or this space. Feeling our bodies. Feeling our breath. Feeling the love and the hope and the grace. And we take that into our lives with us. We can take that everywhere we go with us. Because we know, we know and we feel we are one with the light and love of God. We are one with the light and love of the universe. And we're not alone. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, Scott. That was good. So yeah, just uh, getting a nice, sort of comfortable, calm state from here on out for the rest of the show. And uh, yeah, no, Namaste, Scott. That was that was very, very good. And again, for those interested, check out the Three Days of Light website, 3 dl gathering.com as well as emergenceearth.com and if you haven't yet feel free to message facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio for your chance to get in on the draw and we'll still be doing that at the end of the show and uh, we'll actually we'll have two winners for today who will be getting their all access pass to 3dl so scott is there any uh, anything else that you would like to mention before we let you go this time around oh wow um whether you come to Three Days of Light or wherever you are, you know, it's it's the four pillars are where it's at for us, for me, you know. So just just live that. Live those four pillars. You can find those on emergenceearth.com. Do I just Thank say you. them again? Yes. <laughs> there is natural health and wellness. There is personal spiritual development, community and culture, and sustainable living. I think that's a pretty good way of breaking it down, so very practical way of looking at it. But uh, thanks again, Scott. So we'll uh, I'll talk to you again in the near future, man. And uh, we'll definitely be seeing you in, what, only less than three weeks, less just in a couple of weeks from now, so... That's right. Uh, uh, three weeks from now, we will we'll be in Black Mountain, which is 15 minutes from downtown Asheville, um, gathering and dancing by the fire. Celebrating. Community. Celebrating. Love. That's right. Cool, Scott. All right. Well, thanks again, Scott, and uh, we'll talk to you in the near future. Hey, thank you very much, Brandon. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Cool. All right. So there you go, guys. And... Uh, with that said, we're going to keep things moving along in the show, and uh, technically the show is scheduled to go till 1 a.m., which gives us about 45 minutes left in the show as it is right now. So at this point, we've had Scott on. He was the one person who we had planned, but uh, we're still waiting on Jen. Um, she may or may not be around tonight, but uh, we'll manage without her, I'm sure, and you know, we'll sort of give her her love and give her our love anyways. I'm sure she's thinking about us, so uh, let's uh, think about her for a second there. And uh, you know what? For the next uh, 45 minutes, I'm curious. Like, what are some things that you guys, that you guys, would like to see brought on to the show? So uh, I do have uh, one person who um, I'm going to be bringing on to the show to talk about some stuff. But in the meantime, guys, feel free to PM me uh, with a live chat if you're already there. Talk to log in. And if you uh, are not in the live chat, just refresh the browser and log in. You can log in through your Facebook, which, which uh, makes it pretty easy to do. So just having to create a whole new uh, account on the radio. radio. So, so um, again, again, I've been messaging me through the chat, 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 chat and just give us a topic, 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 top
You you sound like um Judge Dredd right now. Do I? Do I? Judge Yeah. Or wait, 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 do do that impression of Bane you you did before now. It happens every time we have a meditation. By the way, I'm Vaughn, everyone, asking in the chat. Um, My mic is you, No, it, it's it's still like... Did you try, like, unplugging your mic and putting it back in yet? Uh, I, if it, it's USB, so I can't really do that. I'm using it probably grounding now. It, it no. won't reconnect automatically? Hold on, let me... Okay, okay it did. Hold on. Okay, did that do anything? It's still fuzzy. I, I can't. I don't even understand what, what would even cause that. Wiggle the cord a bit. Is that doing anything? Wait, I'm wiggling it. Do <laughs> anything? <laughs> no, maybe. It, it's getting a little bit better. Just wiggle it some more. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it maybe. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I you're was... so close to being perfect. I think you just need to wiggle it a little bit more. A little bit more. Hold on, guys. We're just. Wiggling it live on air here, so <laughs> there we go. Is that I don't know. Is that better? Yeah, you are. You you sound clear as crystal now. Really? All right. I'm dead well, serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we did that. So anyway, I swear uh, I wasn't trolling. Like it actually did help. Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm glad you weren't either. So <laughs> right, I wouldn't yeah, do that to you. Yeah. Again. Um, with that, with that said, guys, now that you can hear me, if you would like to make donations to Paradigm Shift Radio so that I can forward a mic that doesn't crap out on me once an episode, feel free to do so. Uh, we do accept donations. Go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash donate. And uh, not just for me to buy a mic. I mean, if you're a philanthropist, feel free, feel free to, like, throw a bunch of money our way and we'll use it for the greater good of humanity. <laughs> But if you just want to help contribute, uh, you know, ten dollars here, twenty dollars there does help us pay for the monthly cost. Uh, what, which it, co- uh, it for Blog Talk Radio, it costs about forty dollars a month to keep going with the, uh, for, with the sort of membership that we got set up right now. So well, I mean, that's not. So you're using a USB mic, right? Uh, yes, I am. Is it Audio Technica? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, like the name uh, of it. Dynamic. Uh, well, I'll, I'll see if um Jericho, because Jericho is not really using the the Audio Technica yeah, USB I, mic. I'll just send you mine. I, that I, one you can donate. Maybe that would make sense too. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Sweet. Yeah, I, I do accept like uh you know like actual <laughs> parcels or anything if you have something to send. So. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, don't worry about it, man. You, you need it. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I said, it's funny though because it's like consistent once like and it's always around the same time that it that it craps out so it's it is which I was wondering is it blog talk radio are they are they trying to like buy our premium service and we won't crap your mic out on you or something they're a blog talk radio or b the goddamn Illuminati trying to <laughs> shut the down. Illuminati yeah I think it's pretty obvious the Illuminati's on to us man yeah, I mean why have meditation why wouldn't they be. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're like trying to like fight the system here. So the Illuminati's like, oh, we gotta stop these guys. Oh, that, like, that reminds me, this guy hit me up on Skype. I don't know how he found my name, but he sent me a message and it said something along the lines of, I have to tell you the secrets about the demons and stuff. And I'm like, what? And he's, I'm like, and I told him, I said, uh, you know, you should, um, you, you should stop living in that duality and start, you know, living from the heart. You know, that that you can only, uh, you can only uh, let in what you want to let in. That's bad. And then, and then he writes back because I guess he sent that message to me like a few days ago because I never get on Skype. And he wrote back. He's like, he actually he tried calling me. He's like, you answer right now. And I'm like, what? what? And then he's like, he's like, that is not how you start a conversation with someone. Who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> he's like, are you a, the Illuminati? <laughs> and I'm like, wow. oh, man. You can't. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like, I only brought that up because it's been a few times recently where there are certain people that think that the information that we talk about is like evil information. Yeah, well, well, even the word like occult, right? I mean, there was, you know, a few years ago, people who would hear that would automatically have like a negative connotation sort of to exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, occult just means hidden, as far as I understand, yes. And once you find the meanings of the words, you realize like how silly it was that you, that certain people, I mean, like, like Lucifer, the light bearer, you know, it's yeah, like exactly. it, it, people, once you really break down what the word means, you're no longer afraid of it, which really 
stresses the whole term that uh, that that um, you know you're only afraid of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I think uh, you know maybe, maybe that's something because um, I do have another friend who may or may not be calling in, but but in the meantime, since this is something that I think uh, we would have gotten into regardless either way, but the whole topic of the Illuminati. Um, like seriously, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to call them. Like it's a habit I already started. So, uh, like the whole idea of the Illuminati. Like, from what I understand, it, it, part of it. I mean, you can look at it at different layers, I guess. But like, part of it is this idea that, in the same way that this information exists about like altered states of perception, like higher dimensional realities, and the fact that we can like create reality more so than we realize. Like, I think there's people who high up there like, quote-unquote, are, like, aware of this knowledge. And they may be, like, beyond sort of government. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. like, that's something that I'm just really interested in, is that, like, who up near the top sort of understands this information, so to speak? Because, like, it's not necessarily within the government offices, but it could be something that's, like, influencing the government offices. But then, in a lot of ways, you know, like, uh, people think the Illuminati, the Illuminati is like a negative sort of thing, but mm-hmm. I, I almost see it as part of like this necessary energy that exists so that like we as souls uh, are sort of like going through the difficult process of like being held back just so we can get the experience of having to like overcome those obstacles it, in our way. Yeah. There wouldn't be a process if they didn't exist. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'd be we'd be on easy mode, and, and and I think that would defeat the whole purpose. You know. It, yeah, it would kind of yeah. I think um, one thing though that I, have you seen um, the Star Trek the original series? Have did you ever watch that? No, no, it wasn't. No, it didn't really. <sighs> There's an episode. I I never watched the original series for a long time, but recently I watched the episode called "Where No Man Has Gone Before," and it's actually an episode where a man achieves a higher level of consciousness. He achieves Christ consciousness instantly. And he's on and he, and then he starts learning everything so quickly and, and he becomes bored with all the information that he gets that he knows. Huh. And he's able to read people's thoughts. He's able to read everything. He's able to move things with his mind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and it's really interesting. This is like one of the first episodes of Star Trek. And it gets to the point where where um Spock, which is the Vulcan, you know, all logic guy, and then you have Kirk who's all about emotions and, and how they can they can you know, they're still important. And and the whole show's concept is just ridiculously like interesting to me now, especially with what I know now. And then I, now I'm watching Star Trek and it's just like, it's on a whole other level of understanding. But I mean, like the, what they were showing is that having all that knowledge without having the wisdom and the maturity to have it, you kind of get the situation with what people believe are the Illuminati anyways. Mm-hmm. It's not really the Illuminati, whatever they, whatever they're called. But I mean, like the people who, who are behind the scenes that could possibly have the information because why wouldn't they, if it's out there, they should have it, um, you know, before we do, because they have, you know, the, the means and they've always been interested, which is why there's military bases and all those nodal points, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they know. They, they, yeah. There's someone somewhere who knows, and they're definitely calling the shots, you know. And then yeah. that, it, all it takes is an excuse, like we need a base here to um, <laughs> stuff, you know. And that, it doesn't matter. The army's going to do what they say. But yeah. um, and, and that's and that's another thing. Like as far as military, it's all about following the orders of something that you don't really understand. And I always thought that 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 you know to me that's that's the same thing that religion is. Anything else out there? I think that we get to the point where countries are of collective consciousness and a lot of people don't even understand what's behind that consciousness within that and when they get behind that i think that's the issue i don't think it's some crazy group that disappeared a long time ago but i think it's there's definitely um a a huge thing and it's, it's present in everyone and even the most ignorant people you see that that's kind of the projection of what that is saying for people to become and that's why I think so many people get emotional and angry and, and scared and get into this, uh, this whole um, uh, we have to stop the Illuminati thing because yeah. you know they, they instead of instead of just loving people and showing them the example of what they could be, they instead get either fear struck or angry or think they have something to attack. Which yeah. you know how are you going to attack an idea? Huh. I mean just like just like you know it's it just like people want to be v's they want to they want to be an idea that no one can attack but that's also an idea that you can't really attack it's just something that we have to overcome as a consciousness because that's going to drive us into what people call the lucifer experiment you mm-hmm. know 
Yeah, and even when you when you look at like the symbolism commonly associated with the Illuminati, like you get the whole like eye in the triangle thing. Like this is something that I've thought for a while, but me personally, I'm like I'm like yo, like we need to take that back. Like a, a lot of people who sort mm-hmm. of aren't really into this stuff sort of see that symbol as like a negative thing, and they're just like associated with like Big Brother watching over you sort of stuff. But to me, at least, like I I see like the eye on the pyramid as like a very like sort of what it refers to, like this this idea of like higher consciousness and, and, and higher perception, and uh, one of the things that's actually interesting, if you take um, if you take the the pyramid, um, yeah, like okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So if you take if you take the pyramid and the way that the third eye is depicted, it, it, it's like the top capstone. It's like replacing the top capstone. Mm-hmm. So like if that top capstone wasn't there, then you'd have like the shape of a square on the top of the pyramid because the pyramid has like four sides to it and stuff. So mm-hmm. then if you were to say, if you had like um, a five dimension or a, like five pyramids sort of lined up in the shape of a cross. So there was uh, like three going uh, like vertically and then like three or sorry, four going vertically, and then three going uh, horizontally. Wait, am I doing mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's in the shape of a cross. Now, if you were to take all those triangles and fold them in on, on each other, you would get a box. Like, there would be a box that would be made perfectly out of all these triangles, but then, like, within that box, because the capstone's missing, would be, like, another box. And mm-hmm. then, to me, like, this box within the box, like, sort of represents, like, this idea of, like, realities within reality, and like, meta-realities. So, it almost Inception refers to, like... reality. Yeah, it almost refers to, like, the holographic nature of, of reality in, in a way that I see it. Like, even, like, relate to, like, uh, sacred geometry, like, how, like, the, the Merkaba, like, fits inside itself infinitely. Like, this is, like, mm-hmm. that hidden box that's within the bigger box that we don't even really realize is there. And And, again, like, that's what the uh, third eye is, is sort of in place of. But, like, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people wouldn't really think about it. Again, it exactly. I, well, uh, the thing is, the eye, got, they're afraid of of the information because they don't understand what it means. In fact, Horus Rising in itself, we're actually going to be going into that a lot, especially we're going to start making a lot of videos. We haven't done it yet, but we're working on it. But um, one of the big issues is the fact that most things that are that are considered to be negative bad words, everything, the source of those words is something that people do not want the collective consciousness to figure out, which is why they're curse words, which is why they're they're bad things or things you don't say. In fact, they've taken the spiritual meaning and the roots out of these words, and they've just turned it into something extremely negative. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it's, just, it's actually really common that I've noticed it happen. I just think it's kind of interesting that all this time, people don't look up what words mean. I mean, you, you you really learn a lot when you break things down. You really learn a lot when you look, when you try to like really look back as far as you can to see the way the ancients used to look at these words because they existed, and a lot of them are, are built out of root words that you know were used a long time ago. And I, just, I, I find that really interesting. Another thing that that reminds me of the whole language thing is that um, I think as a as a world, I think we need to come up with a universal language. We do at least choose one. Because, uh, you know, I've been working with people from all over the world, and there is a huge language barrier. And it's really hard to um, to really build and really understand other parts of the world. Because, I mean, like, we can listen to our news tell it to us biasly, or we can listen to their news tell it to us biasly. But, I mean, until we really connect with each other, you know, all over, because we have the Internet, but what use is it if we don't know what they're saying? And when you translate something, you miss a lot of words because there's a lot of words that we don't even have words for in English and other languages. And it's, it, you know, it's and like I feel like you could still learn a lot from language immersion, but I do think that as a world, there should be a world order where we actually learn how to communicate amongst everyone, because if we don't do that, then we're not going to understand what everyone needs. Yeah, like I, I think there's so much that's hidden in, hidden in plain sight in, in terms of words. Um, like one of the ones I just sort of like comes to mind is even the word. Uh, I mean, this isn't uh, like historically sort of um, rooting back to something, but like even the word the present. You know, when you think about it, like what it, like the present moment. Like it's it's literally like the present. Like you know, in the same way that you mm-hmm. open up a present on Christmas, it's like the gift that the universe has, like, given to us, like, the experience, the present. So, I mean, that's just kind of the only time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, which is kind of a cool way to to think about it like that, so. It's it's really, um, 
there's so much um, as clunky as the English language seems. There's actually a lot of beauty in it that usually gets unnoticed because we don't appreciate or understand the words that we're saying. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like you can read a whole dictionary and still miss the whole point because I mean, it's you're just I don't know. There's so much to learn. People, you know, people, I can't <laughs> believe people get bored or waste their time yeah. doing stupid monotonous stuff all the time. I've been yeah, spending they're... like the last couple of months just learning and learning and learning, and there's just so much to learn and like so little time. But I mean, it, it's 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 amazing what's out there, and I feel like once you give people a taste of that, which is why I I feel like it's I I really understand now why showing people sacred geometry and um just just wetting their tongue will just start a paradigm shift in their head because they'll go I don't know what is that this is blowing my mind yeah. and you know after that I want more then yeah. Yeah, it's really it important. It yeah. Because I, mean, yeah, like, I think our whole society is so built on hating and, and being against any new information, especially occult, quote unquote, information. That you know, But once you finally find a way to get it to them, which is why I like spirit science so much, because it's a way to introduce people to something without looking um, suspicious, you know, about it. I mean, it, before when you try to tell people about new age and whatnot, you know, they would they would shut off instantly because, you know, you only had a few, um, and you also have a whole bunch of people trying to make a lot of profit off the new age uh, movement. And I think that's, that's really um, left a big dent. And I feel like it's, it's really, I'm really great. I'm really grateful now that there's a lot of, um, you know, the whole paradigm shift and, and spirit science and all these movements and noetic institutes are really mixing science and, and, uh, and, you know, all these, ancient metaphysical things because now it's like for people who are religious or whatever we can say well you know your religion agrees with science now uh, and uh science is agreeing with us now so can we bridge a gap here and you know people are more open to to bridging that gap now like i was yeah. able to show my grandmother these these videos yeah you're saying that's that's awesome man like what okay yeah that's something i'm interested in what was your grandmother's response to seeing the spirit science videos it blew her mind, really. Um, it, it, um, she she she's been really interested in them. I I started her and Grandpa out with um with Spirit Science Twelve because that's just basically the just hits you the, with everything. That's like the history one. Yeah, the human history. Movie. Yeah, human history. Yeah. And yeah. I because I, I figured that'd be the best way because I might not. Be, I figured I might not be able to get them through all the earlier ones. I just want to hit them hard first to see what happens. <laughs> and so it worked because she. Yeah. Extremely interesting, and this is someone who is, um, th- to be honest, in my opinion, is very close-minded to a lot of things, and um, and she she was um, because I mean like she was raised Baptist, you know, very strict religious. Anytime I would try to talk to her about any other religion, I remember when I was looking into New Age stuff when I was a kid, she took my books away and threw them away, and I showed her this stuff, and it blew her mind, and she really she really um, understands it and and believes it. And it's, it's surprising to me, but I mean, like Jordan did a really good job in yeah. the way he presented that. Yeah, again, like that's a testament to that. There, if, uh, if it's reaching the demographic of 55 plus, like that's an accomplishment. Yeah. So, very, very cool. But uh, with that said, so my 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 uh my goal for everyone right. tonight listening is to uh go sure, show your grandmother sure. spirit signs. That's right, and 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 that's what I was gonna say. And and it may not even be your grandmother or something. Like it may be like your sibling or even just your parents. But mm-hmm. that's a that's definitely. Um, I I think that's worth doing because I mean it's not gonna hurt, right? And, and, yeah. And and like is she like is she inter- is she understanding it? Like is I think that's the important thing. Like is it making sense to her, so to speak? It is. Uh, she kind of when we when we went through the other videos, she had a harder time understanding um the phi ratio and the Fibonacci. Oh, okay. Sequence, okay. but I mean, like, I mean, that's understandable because I mean, yeah. those are on levels of math that they didn't really even teach back when she was in school. True, true. I mean, so I mean, like, seeing that was a little bit harder. But once it got back into um, living from the heart and everything, it really resonates with her. Right on. And, yeah, and I, and I mean, like, I've also been showing spirit science to every single person I meet. I mean, it's it's. I mean, to me, like, that is just a gateway drug for awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 the perfect thing. It's a package deal with um, information that everyone wanting more information, and I like that. And I like that people um, on the video are actually complaining about not having sources, even though they're there in the video. But uh, but it just shows that people are going to start looking for more information that has to do with it, and that's going to lead people on you know their own spiritual journeys. And I mean, like it's you know uh, the only thing that 
bothers me right now, it's been bothering me a little bit, it's the fact that on the video, there's been so much negative reception to it that some of the people I show it to, the comments will pop up first before the video starts loading. And you'll see a bunch of people just like, this is crap, it's stupid, it doesn't, this is fake, oh, there's all this stuff is just, just uh, totally mistaking history. And I mean, like, uh, it, it, honestly, I don't even know if these people actually watch the video or if they just, you know, are completely against it and don't yeah, resonate with it at all. They're, like, scared of it in a lot of ways, too, right? They're, like, trying to, like, defend their position within the Matrix, so... But yeah, it, it, I mean, like, and I was reading the Flower of Life today, and it was talking about how, you know, a lot of uh, archaeologists in Egypt all agree that the pyramids are a certain age simply because their religious texts do not allow them to make it any older. If they did, right, that would yeah. be blasphemous. And I think yeah. that's really sad, especially yeah. when we, we've proven that the Sphinx is older. And we've proven that, but now the issue now is that we, we were bring underwater cities now that we are dating now in other countries and we are proving that the earth is way way older than what they were saying it was and now yeah. you know now now what is that going to do now people in Egypt we have we have evidence against them and now we can figure out more information because there's a lot of stuff we haven't even been allowed to research in Egypt that could completely change our perception on our entire history and they've built bases around them to keep us from figuring that out yeah yeah it's you know, always it's always it's always suspicious when there's military bases in particular spots so. <laughs> but that's something i think we can get into you know we can talk about dulcie and underground bases another time i think but uh sort of maybe keeping on the subject i, I do just want to bring someone else into this conversation vaughn i'm going to keep mm -hmm. you on the air but uh let me introduce, this is a, a friend of mine, Rebecca, who's also part of the Paradigm Shift London community, and uh, she also got started the Paradigm Shift Muskoka community while she was there over the summer. So, Rebecca, if you're listening, I'm going to bring you on the air in a couple seconds, and uh, we'll go from there. So, hey, Rebecca, can you hear me? Yeah, I've been able to hear you the whole time. Uh, perfect. Cool, cool. Well, we're we're on air now, and Vaughn's still on air with us too. But uh, thanks for being on air with us, Rebecca. So, um, like, what's uh, what would you like to add to the show? I'm obviously you're listening to our conversation. I'm not sure if you have something to add on to that, but I know you just want to talk about a couple of things in particular. Yeah. Um. Well, I agree with Vaughn. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That um, we should show our grandparents. Things because I have not, I guess, like you could call it debate. So, with my grandmother, she's very Catholic about this kind of thing, and it's almost like we're we have the same beliefs, just um, we come from different ages, right? So, yeah, you yeah, okay. yep, yep, we can hear <laughs> yeah, like Ooh, I, I'm I think, on the radio. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You're on the internet. Say hello to everyone out there. But uh, yeah, Re Rebecca, like, I mean, what is um, just sort of dovetailing this? Like, you're you're a big fan of like the whole paradigm shift thing. Like, what what is a paradigm shift to you in terms of like community and, and everything else? Um, to me, paradigm shift. I like how Brennan describes it as a hub because like you could have um, paradigm shifts in any place you go, like. Brandon said I started one in Muskoka, Port Carling, when I went, and it, like, caused a lot of different synchronicities to happen. Um, someone was really freaked out because a lady came who she knew who, like, t really touched her one day emotionally because the lady who came is a psychic, and she, like, anyways, it was really, like, emotional, and it was synchronistic, which mm -hmm. I love the idea of synchronicity, you know? Yeah, synchronicity is a, a big thing, and, you know, when when you start to sort of realize that synchronicity is possible, it, it just sort of encourages you to keep going forward with things, especially in terms of uh, creating a paradigm shift community, because, like, you know, the simple simple term, like, if you build it, they will come, and, and more so and than just... you don't just, want to just sit back so, and do nothing, like, if you have yeah. an idea, why not make it, like, reality? That's the whole exciting part about <laughs> yeah totally like that's, that's a little bit harder for it other than like dreams are easy to get things to 
Yeah, that, we we got to be. Uh, I know I know you're really interested in the dream exploration as well, but I think that's important too. You know, like a lot of people. And Vaughn, we were sort of talking about this, like there's so much to learn, there's so much information out there, so you sort of have to like pick and choose your focuses, and, and some people might be really focused on going internally, but but we can't forget about like the external work that, that we still have to do, so whether that be, you know, going out there and finding more people in our community, or, or showing these videos to our grandparents, <laughs> we got to get, get creative with, uh, you know, finding new and exciting ways to to engage other people with these ideas, like I think that's that's sort of you know that that's that's our uh, you can tr use the term objective or, or or mission, but I think that's what we're trying to do here, right? Like that's like we are all star like we are all from the stars and we are all like infinite light, uh, and this is something that you know like the Eastern philosophy is known for a while, and Western science is starting to figure out. So how do we remind other people of this fact is, is something that I think is an ongoing discussion and brainstorming session that paradigm shift it's is. like it's like in the self-esteem prophecy you know how we started off and we started um we wanted to find out the meaning of life obviously and um we got comfortable with our inventions and the explorers went off and they went to try to find the meaning of life but never came back and we got comfortable in the way we live and we kind of forgot that someone went out there to try and find the meaning Yet we've been figuring it out for ourselves, like, our whole lives, slowly more and more. Yeah. Now, uh, Vaughn, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's the, what's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is 42. Wait, what? 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 Oh, uh, uh, it's... The meaning of life, I think, is to live it and to experience it and to grow. I mean, and and to be honest, I I mean, like... When you were a child, what was the meaning of life to you? You know, it was to experience everything you could all the time. And that's why we had such a bigger appreciation for everything back then. That's why waking up your inner child is so important, I think, because you're you're missing out on life every day you spend chained to Facebook or the Internet or television. Or, you know, most people just go from concrete to concrete, and we miss everything yeah. around us. Yeah. Sorry, go, ahead. go ahead, Rebecca. Sorry for interrupting you, Vaughn. Um, kids are on the internet too these days. Just saying. Do what? Oh, just that kids are on the internet a lot these days too. Kids are. I know. I go outside and my my neighborhood's a ghost town. <laughs> and there's yeah. and I know there's children, but they're not out. <laughs> yeah, I work with kids and um. A lot of times they ask me to make them stuff, like I was making a chessboard out of paper, and the kids are like, make me one, make me one, but what half the fun of doing it is making it. Mm -hmm. um, that was always my favorite part, like like knowing that you can make that. We we live in a society that is um, addicted to instant gratification thanks to the Internet. And um, we love the Internet so much we can't even tell it's using us most of the time. And, you know, people, they they want to keep getting, 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 but not making, making, making. We don't know how to make it. We just know how to get it. And it's all instant. And I, I feel like it's really scary that we have this unfiltered Internet that children can get on and see a bunch of information, but they don't have the wisdom yet to understand how to understand it it's so it's to them that's how we get so many lost and confused and angry people now everywhere because they're they're just they're just out finding out all this stuff and wherever it leads them and the internet's just basic it's just like a grocery store you know it's built up psychiatrically every time you see advertisements that are trying to pull you into lucrative things that you'll want same goes for children i mean depending on what websites they're on they're going to it's just going to lead them on a chain of things that program them and that's not the kind of programming that a child's mind should be succumbed to, especially when they don't even, you know, know how to filter that out. And that's why, like, if I have children one day, you know, I'm I'm going to raise them away from all technology. I mean, I'll let them have technology later on in their life, but I want them to understand what it is before they use it. Because I understand that it used me a lot when I was a kid. And I wanted a lot of things I didn't need, and I put my parents to hell to get them. Rebecca, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just that um, even though um, internet and stuff can be bad for kids, all that kind of thing, um, I think that kids are like 
humans do and they have a choice. And, like, um, we can try to be, like, more supportive as people as we go forward and try to, like, help each other out. Because especially during the austerity agenda, that's going to be hitting us a lot harder in the next few years. Cutbacks on services. Like, we're going to need each other more than ever, you know. We're not going to be able to rely on the system so much. It'll be like another depression. Yeah. Yeah, like that. I was just gonna say, like that's that, that's a scary thought to think that, like you know, how many people know how to grow their own food? Something something as simple as that. So, and and Rebecca, like I know, like you you guys grew a garden in your front yard. Like that's a pretty cool and ambitious thing that I think uh, needs to catch on in, in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. You know, we should be teaching our kids like how to grow their own food, how to make their own food, and and how to learn, you know, it's one thing to just throw information at them, but again, like what you said, Vaughn, like, we need to, like, teach them how to be taught, and, and how to process, like, all this information, mm-hmm. so. I, I so. feel like it's it's one thing as a community, and that's one thing I, I like about Paradigm Shift communities, is reaching out to our own community. If we can reach out to people, they will they will pass information on to their children, and being able to help people learn, that's why I want to build a school of thought, especially mm-hmm. in the coming times, like we were just talking about, how bad it's probably going to get um, it, you know, people are going to need somewhere where they can learn how to learn because we didn't learn how to learn through school. And none of us are prepared to live on our own on first survival because once the, if, if the power goes out, people are going to be completely lost. But I don't think it should be that way. I think if we reach out to our communities and we teach them and we start connecting again like neighbors should, then, you know, people will, will, will start changing because people aren't happy right now. It's kind of obvious. I mean, like, they're comfortable, but they're really not happy. And they're really looking for people to, to reach out to them, which is why I feel like I'm getting a lot of people reaching out to me all of a sudden. Because, I mean, they, they really they want to know how to how to take care of themselves in every way, not just consciously, but physically. And, you know, you know, the people with the information, they're getting hit up. So I'm glad that people are waking up now and it's starting to happen globally. And I'm I'm glad that it's happened now. Cause if it didn't happen now, then we'd be doomed. Mm-hmm. It's the hundredth monkey theory. Exactly. So it's like uh, so many, the hundredth monkey theory being like once the hundredth monkey realizes a conscious um, thing, then more monkeys throughout the land realize it too, like on other islands and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there there was that uh, experiment with the crossword puzzle where they where a bunch of people did the same crossword puzzle and the more the people did it the more new people they showed it to could figure it out a lot faster. Yeah. And I mean we're definitely connected and I feel like now that we're now that so many people are starting to learn how to raise their consciousness then people are just going to start doing it automatically. And, I mean, that's something that a lot of us can't even imagine. And a lot of us are still skeptical of because we're just like, well, if that happened, the whole world would change. But could that really happen? Because that would be a huge deal, <laughs> like a ridiculously huge deal. And if that happens, then, then man, the world is going to be just like uh, people like Jack Ways Fresco think it's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, right. but okay. So, so what does that what does that even mean? You know, we got we got about ten minutes left in the show, but just to sort of cover an important topic, because I think we're we're sort of preaching to the, the to the choir. You know, a lot of people who are listening to this show right now, maybe they've been following it for a while. They have this idea of like consciousness, like. But to someone who's um, outside of the circle, so to speak, like, like what does raising one's consciousness even mean? Like, how would you explain that to someone? Like, either of you sort of bounce that back and forth. I think the best way to say is, since most people know the story of Jesus, imagine being Jesus and imagine actually having his level of awareness and love for the world and people and things and yourself and understanding of everything. That is what raising your consciousness to a Christ consciousness would be, is to to reach that kind of level. I would have to say if you um, can't relate to Jesus, then... You know, try to um, feel, uh, like, just feel yourself in your own body. Um, Realize you're just experiencing and try to always question if you're dreaming or not. I find when I question if I'm dreaming, I feel more in the present moment. Mm. So that's how I would say it. You should be 
weren't conscious. Yeah, like it, it is that awareness, like that that eye on the top of the pyramid that we were talking about, like the the eye that can see more when it when it's open, sort of thing. So I think uh, to me, yeah, like raising one's awareness is just raising or raising one's consciousness is raising one's awareness of themselves, their surroundings, all things, and their place. And you want to say you want to stay balanced, right, with your top chakras and root chakras. Like yeah. we are connected to something higher and we can like tune into that and be sensitive to it but we also have to remember to stay grounded and mm-hmm. we're on this earth like we're on this planet we're here for a reason so stay grounded so you can do what you're here to do and i know uh like kind of on what you were saying this idea of um like us as a collective coming into this idea of christ consciousness like that was something that was actually brought up in, in, in a recent uh video that jordan Posted I know. I saw so, that video so. today. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that was uh, well said within that video. And uh, just to plug Spirit Science, uh, youtube.com slash the Spirit Science. But I imagine quite a few people who are listening to this show already know about that. Yeah, but, they're uh, actually I, releasing their new video tonight in like the next hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> by the time like this is up, uh, we'll have it yeah. linked into here as well. So, But uh, guys, um, we have about eight minutes left on the show, and there's a couple other people on in the queue as well. Um, Daniel, I I can see you're you're in the queue. I'm going to bring you onto the queue, but uh, Vaughn, Rebecca, I'm going to keep you guys on. We'll just uh, get this going as a little bit more of a group conversation. Um, But again, because I mean, you know, it's good that we can talk about these things, because just as to remind people, like, why we're doing this, why we're having this radio show, like, it's really just about practice, and, and that's why it's important to have these conversations, so that we can practice trying to explain explain things that we don't usually get a chance to explain so that we can try explaining them again to the people who might need to hear it the most, so to speak. So again, like this is, you know, this is like light worker training radio if you want to think about it that way. It's one way to think about it. But, you know. Whoop, whoop, that's right. Okay, so Daniel, I, I'm going to bring you on into the conversation if you are ready. And, uh, oh, hello, Daniel, can you hear us? It's uh, a little... Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. There's like a little bit of static, but but your voice is okay. So, Am I uh, there? Daniel, <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. So, Daniel, introduce yourself. Uh, who are you, and where are you from? Hi. Uh, so, I'm Daniel. That's my name. Um, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Um, I'm a college student at Savannah College of Art and Design, and I make music, and I. I've been, I've been following you guys for the past few shows. Um, I really like what y'all are doing here. It's actually, you know, it's really actually changed the way I, I've lived life over the past few months. It's pretty cool stuff. Cool, man, cool. Like, yeah, like, tell us, from your from your perspective, like, how has your uh, paradigm shifted, so to speak? Like, how do you see things differently than you did, like, a couple months ago? Um, I've been... You know, the whole concept of, like, being mindful and being aware that, you know, you really aren't separate from anyone else and that everything is one, you know, that concept. Um, I've also, you know, not had very much control over my dreaming experience over, you know, the past few months or so. But now, you know, I I watched your first show and I actually, uh, you know, actually went and took down a lot of notes about that. And perfect. I've had, you know, considerable... You know, improvement in my dreaming experience and you know, lucid dreaming and such. Yeah, and and I think those uh, those firsthand experiences are really an important thing to have. You know, a lot of people are just like, oh, well, I saw the movie Inception, that's pretty cool. But to actually like have a visceral lucid dreaming experience, like you know that it's not just theory at that time. But then again, the question arises, like, how do you get back to that? And I think that's something that all of us are sort of working towards is becoming more familiar with these experiences, like in these other astral planes that are innately something that we are familiar with. We just uh, we're just working our way back there and, and trying to remember it. So, but yeah, Daniel, like what um, like what else would you like to bring to the show within the last couple of minutes? Like anything that you feel is like important that you would like to share with people? Um, I say you know start. Like, create your yoga practice, you know, just start following, just really integrate it into your way of life and how you live each day. I mean, it's not an absolute necessity for every single person, but it's really 
helped my life, and I can definitely see helping many people's lives on a profound level. Uh, Rebecca and Vaughn, do you have anything to add to that? Sorry, Rebecca and Vaughn, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not really, but um, I do agree with him. Uh, but I didn't really hear that last bit where he said, create your something practice. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Daniel, your mic's uh, sort of blasting out there. I just got you on mute right now. We may have to let you go within the last couple of minutes of the show, but um, presuming your mic's just really blown out there. But uh, thanks for calling in. And, and I think it's cool to, to hear people who are sort of uh, coming into this stuff fairly recently. Because, again, like what, what going back to the 100 monkey thing, like I think that's that's a big thing in all this is that even if you're just interested in learning about this stuff now, like it's never too late. It, mm-hmm. By by no means is it any too late. So, you know, you're on your own path and there's a time and a place for everything. So if you're like, you know, later in your years and you come across this stuff now, if you're Vaughn's grandmother, like that's awesome. Like it, I'm glad it happens when it happens sort of thing. So guys, within the last couple of minutes of the show, uh, just sort of like any sort of closing thoughts that you would like to leave with our audience. So I'll ask, uh, I'll show Rebecca, I'll ask you first, any closing thoughts you'd like to leave with our audience? Um, live well and laugh. Live well and laugh. Where? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's good. And, uh, Vaughn? Um, stop forgetting to hug five people a day. Ah. That's a practical. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually good. Like, how many people do you hug a day on a daily basis? So, I think, uh, yeah, that that like physical embrace is actually a good one. And and if you have no one else to hug for some particular reason, and even if you do, take uh take some moment to hug yourself. So, maybe uh, just as we're sort of like wrapping up the show here, we should and hug a tree. Give ourselves a, a hug. Yeah, that's right. Or go hug a tree. Trees love hugs. That's right. So. Imagine you're hugging someone that has almost. <laughs> hugging a tree actually does like it, it's something and, and I don't know how many people who are listening to the show have actually done that but if you have not hugged a tree yet go try it cause like there's something or, or send Von Halford a hug with your, by hugging yourself and imagining me in your arms and I will love your hugs <laughs> why not hug a tree right like they're the grandfathers of our planet that's right, that's right, they are, they got spirit, so, cool guys, alright, so we're gonna wrap it up here, thanks for being on the show, Vaughn, thanks for being on the show, Rebecca, and, uh, Again, guys, if, if you are new to Paradigm Shift Radio, check out the Facebook at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio, and feel free to share the YouTube version of this episode once it goes up, which will probably be by tomorrow. And again, if you had, oh, geez, we forgot to do the 3DL draw. Here, hold on. Okay, I'm doing the 3DL draw right now. Okay, the two winners are uh, Jesse and Margaret. So there you go. I'll message you guys. I'm sorry I saved that to the last second. We are going to run. Jesse and Margaret, you won! So Jesse and Margaret, I'll send you guys a message and you'll get your information, no problem. So there's your winners for this week. We'll see you guys next week going into the outro music now and uh, sleep with one eye open. Your third eye, that is. So again, guys, (laughs) take care and we'll see you in the future. Peace.